I like to propose a toast. I said toast, motherfucker. La 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 And I am. The rock. And they ask me, they ask me, they ask me. I tell them. Raise your glasses, your glasses, your glasses to the sky. This is the last call for alcohol for the So get your ass up off the wall The all around the world digital underground pock The Rudolph the red nose reindeer of the rock I take my chain, my 15 seconds of fame And come back next year with the whole fucking game Ain't nobody expect Kanye to end up on top They expected that college dropout to drop and it flop Then maybe he stopped Saving all the good beats for itself Rockefellers only niggas that help My money was standing in Sean Paul goatee head Not John Paul goatee air Cologne fill the air Yeah, they say he bougie, he big headed Would you please stop talking about how my dickhead is Flow infectious, give me 10 seconds I have a buzz bigger than insects in Texas It's funny how what ain't nobody interested To the night I almost killed myself in Lexus Now I am And they ask me, they ask me, they ask me, I tell them Raise your glasses, your glasses, your glasses to the sky This is the last call for alcohol for the So get your ass up off the wall Now it's Kanye the most overlooked, yes sir Now it's Kanye the most overbooked, yes sir Do the fans want the feeling of a tribe called Quest? But all they got left is this guy called West That'll take freeway, throw him on tracks with most death You call him Quiley or Quayley, I put him on songs with Jay-Z I'm the Gap like Banana Republican, Old Navy And ooh, it come out sweeter than old Sadie Nice as Bum B when I met him at the Source Awards Girl he had with him ass, coulda won the Horse Awards And I was almost famous Now everybody love Kanye I'm almost raining Some say he arrogant Can y'all blame him? It was straight embarrassing How y'all played him Last year shopping my demo I was trying to shine Every motherfucker told me That I couldn't rhyme Now I can let these dream killers Kill my self-esteem I use my arrogance as esteem To power my dreams I use it as my gas So they say that I'm gas. But without it I'll be last So I ought to last So I don't listen to the suits Behind the desk no more You niggas wear suits cause you can't dress no more You can't say shit to Kanye West no more I rocked 20,000 people, I was just on tow, nigga I'm kind of Louis Vuitton Don Bought my mom a purse, now she Louis Vuitton mom I ain't played a hand, I was dealt, I changed my cards I prayed to the skies and I changed my stars I went to the malls and I balled too hard Oh my God, is that a black card? I turned around and replied, why well, yes But I prefer the term African American Express Brains, power, and muscle Like Dane, Puffy, and Russell Your boy back on the hustle You know what I've been up to Killing y'all niggas on that lyrical shit Man, they Color bins, I push miracle whips and I am And they ask me, they ask me, they ask me, I tell them Raise your glasses, your glasses, your glasses to the sky This is the last call for alcohol for my niggas So get your ass up off the wall oh. So this a and all and Rockefeller named Hip Hop Pick the truth beat for Beanie And when I was in a session with him I had my demo with me You know, like I always do and I played the song He's like, who's that spitting? I'm like, it's me He's like, oh, okay uh, He started talking to me on the phone Going back and forth Just asking me to send him beats And I think he's trying to get into managing producers Because he had this other kid named Just Blaze He was messing with And um, he was friends with my mentor, No ID And No ID told him, look man If you want to mention Kanye You got to tell him that you like the way he rap I was like, I don't know if he's gassing me or that, but he's like, he want to manage me as a rapper and a producer. I'm like, oh, shit. shit. I was messing with uh, D-Dot also. People like this talk about the ghost production, but that's how I got in the game. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here. So, you know, after they picked that truth beat, I was figuring I was going to get some more work. But shit just wasn't popping off like that. I was staying in Chicago. I had my own apartment. I'll be doing, like, just beats for local acts just to try to keep the lights on and be able to go out and buy Get a Pelly Pelly off layaway, get some Jordans or something, get a Techno Marine. That's what we wore back then. <laughs> I made this one beat where I spit up this Harold Melvin sample. I played it for Hip over the phone. He's like, oh, yo, that shit is crazy. Jay might want it for this compilation album he's doing called The Dynasty. 
And at that time, like the drums really wasn't sounding right to me. So I went and um, I was listening to Dre, Chronic 2001 at that time. And really, I just like bit the drums off Explosive and put it like with a sped up sample. And now it's kind of like my whole style where it started when he rapped on this Can't Be Life. And I was like really the first beat of that kind that was on the Dynasty album. I can say that was the, the resurgence of the soul sound. You know, I got to come in and track the beat, and at that time I was still with my other management. I really wanted to roll with hip hop. I just needed some fresh air, you know what I'm saying? Because I've been there for a while, I appreciate what they did for me, but it, you know, it's a, a time in every man's life where you gotta make a change and try to move on to the next level. That day I came and I tracked the beat, and I got to meet Jay Z, and he said, Oh, you a real soulful dude. He uh, played the song because he already spit his verse by the time I got to the studio. You know, he do it in one take. He said, Tell me what you think of this. And I heard it and I was thinking like, man, I really want more like a the simple type Jay-Z. I ain't want like the, the the more introspective, complicated rap, or in my personal opinion. So he asked me what you so think what of you it. Think and it? I was like, man, this shit tight. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'ma tell him. And I was on the train, man, you know. So after that I went back home. Man, I'm I'm just in Chicago, I'm trying to do my thing, you know, I got groups, I got acts, I'm trying to get on and like one nothing really like popping off the way it should have been. One of my homies, that was one of my artists, he got signed, but it was supposed to really go through my production company, but he ended up going straight with the company. So, like, I'm straight holding the phone, getting the bad news that dude was trying to leave my company, and I got evicted at the same time. So, I went down there and tracked the beach from him. I took that money, came back, packed all my shit up in a U-Haul, maybe about 10 days before I had to actually get out. So I didn't have to deal with the landlord, because he's a jerk. Me and my mother drove Come to on, let's just go. Newark, New Jersey. I hadn't even seen my apartment. I mean, when I pulled up, yeah, baby, I unpacked yeah. all my shit. You know, we went to Ikea. I bought a bed. I put the bed together myself. I loaded up all my equipment, and the first beat I made was a Heart of the City. And Beans was still working on his album at that time, so I came up there to Baseline. It was Beans' birthday, matter of fact, and I played like seven beats. And... You know, I guess he was in his zone. He already had the beats that he wanted. I did nothing like it already at that time. But then Jay walked in. I remember he had a Gucci bucket hat on. I remember like like it was yesterday. And hip hop said, "Yo, play that one beat for him." So I played "Heart of the City." And really, I made "Heart of the City." I really wanted to get that beat to DMX. Oh, I then, I right then I played another beat. Then I played another beat. I remember that Gucci bucket. He took it and like put it over his face. And he made him faces like. Ooh. Two days later, I'm in Baseline and I seen Dame. Dame didn't know who I was. I was like, yo, what's up? I'm Kanye. Yo, you that kid Kanye? You that kid that gave all the beats to Jay? Yo, this nigga got classics to your beats, B. You got classics. <laughs> you know how he talking shit. I'm like, oh, shit. And all this time, I'm starstruck, man. I'm still thinking about, you know, I'm picturing these niggas on the show. From the streets is watching or whatever. I'm looking, these are superstars in my eyes. Are they still alive, you know? So, Jay came in. And he spit all these songs like in one day and in two days. I gotta bring up one thing, you know, to go back in the story. The day I did the Can't Be Life beat, I tracked it. I remember Lenny Esser's day, he had some Louis Vuitton sneakers on. He think he fly. And hip hop was there. I think Tata, John Manelli, a bunch of people. I didn't know all these people at the time. They was in the room. I said, yo, Jay, I can rap. And I spit this rap. It said, uh, I'm killing y'all niggas on that lyrical shit. Mayonnaise, color bins, I push miracle whips. And I saw his eyes light up when I said that line. But you know, the West, the rap was like real whack and shit. So that's all the response. He said, man, that was tight. Oh, that, that and was cool. that was it. You know, I ain't get no deal or nothing. <laughs> okay, fast forward. So, Blueprint, H to the Izzo, my first hit single. And I just took that poly, built relationships with people. And my relationship with Quali, I think, was one of the best things that ever happened to my career as a rapper. Because, you know, of course, later, he allowed me to go on tour with him. Man, you know, I appreciate I, I love him for that. Everybody, and, and at this time, you know, I didn't have a deal. I, I had songs, and I had relationships with all these a and so they want a beat from me. So they call me over, they play on some beats. Give me a beat that sound like Jay-Z, you know, they dick riders or whatever. So I'll play them these post-blueprint beats or whatever, and then I'll play my shit. I'll be like, yo, but I rap too. And I guess they was looking at me crazy, because, you know, because I ain't have a jersey on or whatever. Everybody out there, listen here, I played them Jesus Walks, and they didn't sign me. You know what happened? It was some A&Rs that fuck with me though, but then like the heads, there'll be somebody at the company that I say, nah, like Dave Lighty fuck with me. My nigga Mel brought me to a bunch of labels. Jessica Rivera, man. Y'all niggas are stupid if y'all don't sign Kanye. Huh. I'm not gonna say nothing to mess my promotion up. Y'all niggas are stupid. <laughs>
Let's just say I ain't get my deal The nigga that was behind me I mean, he wasn't even a nigga The, the person that actually kicked everything off Was Joe 3H from Capitol Records He wanted to sign me really bad Dame was like, yo, you got to deal with Capitol? Okay, man, just make sure it's not whack Make sure it's not whack and Then one day, I just went ahead and played it I wanted to play some songs Cause you know, Cam was in the room Young Guru and Dame was in the room So I played Actually, it's a song you'll never hear Or maybe I might use a song It's called Wow I go to Jacob with 25,000 You go with 2,500, wow I got 11 plaques on my walls right now You got your first gold single, damn nigga, wow Like the chorus, I'm like, don't bite that chorus Cause I might still use it So I play that song for him And he's like, oh shit, oh, shit. It's not even right I ain't gonna front, it's kinda hot It's actually kinda hot <laughs> Like they still weren't looking at me like a rapper And I'm sure Dane figured like, man if he do a whole album, if his raps is whack, at least we could throw Cam on every song and say the album, you know? <laughs> so uh, Dame took me to the hallway, he's like, yo, man, B, B, you don't want a brick. You don't want a brick. You don't want to catch a brick. You got to be on an umbrella, you get rained on. I told Hip Hop, and Hip Hop was like, oh, word? Actually, even with that, I was still about to take the deal with Capital because it was already on the table and because of my relationship with 3H. That, you know, because I told him I was going to do it and I'm a man of my word. I was going to roll what I said I was going to do. Then, you know, I'm not going to name no names, but people told me, oh, he's just a producer rapper and told 3H that I told the heads of the Capital. And right the day, I'm talking about, I planned out everything I was going to do, man. I, I had picked out clothes. I already started booking studio sessions. I, I started arranging my album, thinking of marketing schemes. Man, I was ready to go. And, and they had mail call me. They said, yo, Capital pulled on the deal. Yo, Capital pulled out of the deal. And, you know, I told them that Rockefeller was interested. And I don't know if they thought that was just something I was saying to gas him up to try to push the price up or whatever. I went up. I called G. I said, man, you think we can still get that deal with Rockefeller? <laughs> Rock, 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 rock,